What's up everybody, you're watching Firewood for Life. We're out here in a pole barn today because I want to show you how to build an affordable, sturdy workbench. It's going to last you a lifetime, and best of all, it's simple to build and you don't need any special tools. So stay tuned, and I'll show you how. Welcome back. I built this workbench probably four or five years ago, and I used it in my garage, but since then we've built this nice new pole barn, and I've moved it out here, but what I realized is that I need another one to kind of take up the space and I want to build a nice miter saw stand built into this which I'm going to show you guys later on in a future video. But what it is is basically uh, it's, it's standard lumber. So you've got two by eights on the top, you got some four by four for the posts, uh, some two by fours to tie it all together, some deck boards down here for some extra shelving. And folks, this thing is rock solid. It's not even attached to the wall right now and that's how sturdy it is. So I've really loved using this. In fact, I loved it so much, obviously I'm gonna build another one. But the one thing that I like about this design is it doesn't require any special tools. Now, if you watch some other videos, uh, you'll see people using joiners or planers or gluing things together and you know, that's, it's great. But those aren't tools that everybody has, including myself out here in a pole barn shop. So I wanted something that didn't take anything more than maybe a chop saw and an impact driver or a screw gun to get the job done and this works perfectly. So I'm gonna give you guys a closer view of all the supplies in the description. I'll list them all down there as to what exactly you need. But basically it's gonna cost you, depending on the price of lumber that seems to be up a little bit right now, um, $150, $170 probably total with, um, with screws. Uh, we're gonna use some lag bolts and like I said, all of the lumber which you can buy at your local lumber store. So I'll give you a close up view, stay tuned and we'll get this build going. So here's a closer up look at the post that we use for the legs on the workbench. And what I love about this workbench is its stability and we get that from these four x four posts. What it is, I bought uh, three eight foot long four x fours and we're gonna cut those up into 35 and a half inches in length. And that'll give you the six legs. What we need to do though, after that, um, is you wanna notch out these two sections right through here. And to do that, after you cut it at the 35 and a half inches in length, just come down three and a half inches and then go in an inch and a half to cut out this notch. And then after that one's cut out, you go down 20 and a half inches down to 24 inches, which again is that three and a half inch width of this two by four. And then you go in an inch and a half, which is the dimensions of a two by four and cut out the second notch. You wanna do that six times. Um, you know, if you have access to a table saw, that works the best because you can just notch it out quickly and take a chisel. It's probably what I'm going to do, but you make the six of those and then you're ready to start assembling the rest of the workbench. So as you can see here, we have our notch taken out of the top with a four by four. And then what we wanna do is come down from the top edge, 20 and a half inches down to 24. And you're gonna take out this notch right here to hold the two by four. Okay, I just wanted to stop for a minute and show you guys a quick trick uh, how to make this center notch real easy. Just take your table saw if you have access to one and make a lot of cuts and then just take a chisel And these pieces will just fall right out. And what you can do is you can take your chisel afterwards and just clean up this inside joint here. See, it's real easy to do. All right, so notching those, uh, those legs out is probably the most tedious and time consuming portion of this whole project. So if you're to this part, you've got the hard part done. So stick with it. Uh, the rest is pretty easy. One thing that I learned when I was just cutting up this lumber is that somehow when I wanted to buy 10 foot long two by fours, I got some shorter ones. I have no idea how, um, but that's okay because we can modify it. And actually I think it's gonna turn out a little bit better. So cut your, if you have 10 foot two by fours, cut them down to 93 inches. That's gonna make this one right here, this one here, and then the two in the back as well. And if you had 10 footers, in theory, you would have enough excess left over that you can make these side runners right here. But since mine are a little bit short, I do have enough lumber, but I'm gonna utilize our leftover four by fours and just cut them down to 19 inches. And then those will fit perfectly right in there. And actually, I think it's gonna make it a little bit stronger. And then what we can do, since I don't have enough four by four 
uh, leftovers is I'll just take a, a two by four and cut it down to the 19 inches up there, just utilizing my last uh, eight foot long two by four. So let's get these cut up, like I said, 19 inches for this, which is gonna go right here, and then 93 inches four times to make the frame. All right, so we have our pieces cut. Uh, these are 93 inches, we have two of those, and then obviously your four by four posts. And what I did on these two by fours here, I came down 46 and a half inches and I made a line. That's gonna be your center line for your center post. And what we're gonna do next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get everything square. So I took a speed square, and I just wanna make sure that all of your posts are square with your two by fours. And these screws right here are gonna be temporary. These are just two and a half inch outdoor screws. And you'll see why in the future steps, but if you just go down like this and tack it all in, we're gonna be replacing these screws with uh, 5 16 uh, lag bolts. So they're gonna go actually into um, your four by fours that are gonna support the base. But I found it's a lot easier to just put these screws in temporarily because you don't have to try to lag bolt everything together at one time. So just go through, add a screw to each one of these, making sure that you square up the legs and you're good to go. All right, we have our two frames laid out and one thing that we need to consider um, building right now is the bottom shelf. So these are the bottom portions of your workbench. And what we're going to eventually do is take these deck boards. These are three quarters of an inch thick and these will be the base of our shelving. So we need to give a support. So these are just one bys and I cut these, or um, I cut four of them up, one by ones at 41 inches. And then I just measured down three quarters of an inch from the top of what should be your bottom shelf and just measure down three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna pre-drill these just because it's one by and I don't want it to split. And just use your two and a half inch screws to secure it in place. Three screws on each one should be more than enough. And then just do it on this side and then as well as the uh, two on the other portion of your workbench as well. All right, this is kind of a cool part of the project because you can stand up both sides of your workbench and you can see your workbench taking place and it's kind of coming to life right before your very eyes. So um, what I did is I have these, uh, the four by four leftovers that we cut earlier and we're gonna use it as a brace. Like I said, it, originally you could use a two by four, but I actually think these four by fours are gonna work better. And I have it tacked into place right now. We're using five inch long, uh, five sixteenths lag bolts. And then we have just a, a washer, a five sixteenths washer on top of it. And what I did is I removed this one screw. Remember the temporary screws that we put in there to begin with? And you're just gonna replace them um, with these lag bolts. Now, if you had some uh, clamps, it would probably be a lot easier, but my clamps wouldn't fit. So I just kind of held it in place. And that's why I have it tacked in, as you can see, going down the workbench. But you're just gonna put two lag bolts, five sixteenths lag bolts in each side on the three uh, support four by fours going down the middle. All right, you guys are doing awesome. We're almost done. Uh, as you can see, we have the four by four secured into the bottom there. And then the next step, we have a two by four. And earlier I said it was an eight foot two by four. And this is where um, my poor shopping earlier is coming back to haunt me because I should have got a 10 foot. It would have made this uh, a little bit easier, but so buy a 10 foot two by four. And what you can do is cut three pieces at 19 inches. So it's gonna go one, two, and then three down here. And then what you need to do is cut two pieces of two by four at 23 inches. And this is gonna serve as a brace right here. Now to secure these, when you're screwing in the ones down here that go through the four by four, you're gonna need to use your five inch lag. But when it comes down here, and this is spaced at 24 inches and then 24 inches down there so it's in the center. Just use a three inch lag bolt. It's more than enough. And like I said, you're not going through the four by four. So let's get these secured and you're ready to start installing the top and then your base. All right, and the next step what I did, these are five and a half inch wide deck boards. Uh, they're three quarters of an inch deep. And remember earlier, this runner that we put on here with the one by on each side, that is gonna hold perfectly the depth of these deck boards so it's nice and flat. Now these are free floating as you can see they're all the way down 
Um, and how it works out, you do have to rip one of the deck boards down a little bit, so if you have a table saw, it makes it a lot easier. Um, so at this point, it's basically up to you. You can keep them free floating because they are supported by the one buys underneath, um, but I kind of like to screw them down. That's what I did on my other workbench, and it seems to work really well. So I'm just gonna take some one and five eighths uh, construction screws and just put two on each board on each side. I am gonna pre-drill just because I don't wanna split the wood, but it's gonna be real easy to do, and like I said, it's up to you on how you wanna work it out. So stay tuned, and the next step, we're gonna install the top. So now that we have the base pretty much complete, take your two by eights and just rest them up on top. You don't have to cut them or anything. And to secure them, we're gonna secure them in to this edge and then these runners that we made. And to use the screws to hold them down, these are three inch multi-material screws. And what I like about them is they have a flat head, so they'll countersink really nice so you don't have anything sticking up above your bench. So just, uh, you know, Take a box of them, screw them in as needed, and you guys are gonna be done. All right, that's it. You guys are done. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you like this build. It's a strong, sturdy workbench. If you take good care of it, it's gonna last you a lifetime. We did it in an afternoon, and if I can do it, trust me, you guys can do it. So, hey, as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys like this stuff, subscribe to the channel, let your friends know. Stay warm, and we'll see you next time.